How Subway was created by a boy who had never made a sub. Starting a business requires just zeal and passion. That might sound ridiculous until you read the story of the Subway founder and how he made a sub on the first day he opened his business. In today's video, we will look at how Subway was created by a boy who had never made a sub and intended to become a doctor. So watch this video till the end to find out and do not forget to like this video. Subway is an American multinational fast food restaurant franchise that sells submarine sandwiches in over 44,000 stores in 110 countries. Quite a successful business, right? But behind the success story lies a bittersweet experience for the 17-year-old Fred DeLuca. Fred was born on the 3rd of October, 1947, to his parents Carmela and Salvatore De Luca in Brooklyn, New York. Being born to a factory worker means something for Fred. They will keep moving wherever his father's company moves them. Fast forward to when Fred was five, they had to move to the Bronx due to a housing project. And it was indeed a major move for the De Lucas since the new apartment was considered an upgrade to the previous basement apartment. They had barely settled in when Fred's father was moved again to Schenectady, New York. Things worked as planned for the DeLucas in the new vicinity, and they became acquainted with a couple named Haby and Pete Bucks. But due to the nature of Fred's father's job, the two families had to lose connection when the DeLucas moved to Bridgeport, Connecticut. At the time, Fred was almost done with high school and had been nursing his passion of being a medical doctor. A year after the DeLuca's family moved to Bridgeport, the Bucks also moved to Armonk, New York, which is about 40 miles from Bridgeport. It seems the friendship of the two families is a divine one. After some weeks of setting up the new home and all, the Bucks family invited their family friends for a picnic. By then, Fred was done with high school and the thoughts of how he would survive in college wearied him out due to his parents' financial constraints. By the time his family received the Bucks' invitation, Fred had received an offer to attend a pre-med program but was reluctant to accept the offer. Stay glued to your screen. Later in the video, we will talk more about how Fred got his first startup capital. There wasn't much hope that I could get through college because my family simply didn't have the money I worked at a hardware store as a store clerk, earning $1.25. It was a good job for a kid, but it wasn't going to provide the money I needed for college. Fred was troubled with his family's financial condition until they honored the invitation of the Bucks to their new home, a modern mansion with two large garages. Fred's hope was renewed since he knew Pete was doing well financially and he could talk to him for a loan or advice on how to make money. After waiting all day to speak to Pete, Fred finally summoned the courage to ask him how he could make money to see himself through college, particularly as he is interested in studying medicine. Pete's answer to Fred's question was, I think you should open a sub shop. It sounded like sarcasm, but Pete was serious about his advice, even though it was far from what Fred had expected. Fred knew his family status, so how could he start a business? Fred asked Pete how he expected him, a 17-year-old boy with no experience, to make a sub and open a sub shop. And Pete responded, All you have to do is rent a small store, build a counter, buy some food, and open for business. Customers will come, put money on the counter, and you'll have all the money you need for college. Fred looked at Pete like he was some circus clown, since he doesn't own a business. But Pete was adamant that his plan would work, and even offered to become Fred's partner. After Fred agreed, Pete brought out a newspaper. Apparently, Pete has been reading about Michael Davis, the founder of Mike's Sub, who started his sub shop with almost nothing and went on to establish 32 restaurants in just 10 years. Pete assured Fred that if Mike could achieve such a feat, then they could achieve more than that. By the end of the day, Fred and Pete came up with a blueprint for their new business and set a short-term goal. 
Pete gave Fred a check for $1,000 to get started on the journey that would later fetch them billions of dollars. This is not the whole story. Later in the video, we will talk about how Fred made his first sub. The next day after their discussion, Fred found an affordable store up for rent in Bridgeport, and after agreeing on the price, they got the shop and moved on to the next phase of their business. Fred and Pete went on a journey to learn how to make a sub, and after a few stops, they both decided Mike's and Amato's sub were the best of all they tasted. Fred and Pete Bucks decided to combine the pros and cons of their best picks and implemented them in their business. Fred and Pete made flyers and started advertising their new business to literally everyone they came across. On August 28, 1965, Peter's submarine finally opened. Fred made his first sub that very day, but had to rush to take part in an important examination. So he asked a friend to assist in the shop. Upon Fred's return to the shop, he was astonished to see quite a lot of people in the queue waiting for their subs. By 6 p.m., Fred's shop had sold over 300 subs and had to close when they ran out of ingredients. Fred was convinced that his business would be a success and their customers would bring more people the next day. The next day, just a few turned up, so sales dropped and after a few months, they were left with no choice but to give up since all their efforts didn't yield anything positive. Pete advised Fred to lock up on the shop and move on with their lives, since they couldn't afford to pay their employees and rent, but a determined Fred wants to give it a final try. It was only six months old, and it was too soon to give up on it. There had to be other options. Pete reasoned with Fred, and both of them agreed to open a second shop amidst the financial constraints of the present shop. All went as planned, and the duo opened a second shop, even though it was a risky move. But it eventually paid off so well that they opened a third shop that same year. Wait a minute, this is not everything. Later in the video, we will show you how Fred and Pete turned their business into a multi-billion dollar business. However, sales dropped drastically as the winter approached and they were back to the old days of contemplating what to do as they have three shops they are running and the business could crash totally if there is no solution. Both Pete and Fred decided to wait till winter was over and that decision birthed the subway that we all know today. Pete's submarine was changed to subway after Pete and Fred consulted William Rosenberg, a businessman who paved the way for the top restaurants, KFC and McDonald's to succeed. After 10 years, Subway was short of their target of 32 restaurants in 10 years, but they learned how to improve their business, which made them even more successful. After resounding success in the country and in a bid to increase their sales again, a Subway franchisee, Stuart Frankel, brought the $5 foot-long sub idea. After testing the concept in the market, sales jumped by more than four times what they were making initially. Since then, Subway has gone on to open more than 44,000 restaurants in more than 110 countries, making it the biggest fast food chain in the world, making over $16 billion in revenue as of 2019. The 17-year-old from the Bronx, who dreamt of opening 32 sub-restaurants in 10 years, now has thousands in over 100 countries after learning how business works.